been looking forward to producing this video. I've really been looking forward to driving the new Ford Ranger Wild Track. Well, it has actually come a long way. How do I know that? Because I've been comparing it to the car that I've been driving for the past four years, the previous generation Ford Ranger Wild Track. So to actually appreciate how far it has come, I figured there's only one way to tell that, to see where it actually came from. New Ford Ranger Wild Track came from that appreciate how far it has come, there's only one way to tell that and that is to, to see where it, it has actually come from. But before that, a quick word from our sponsor. Remember when diesel was just diesel? Remember all that black smoke that used to bellow out of trucks and buses? Well, BH Petrol completely changed the game when it became the first company in Malaysia to introduce Euro 5 Diesel. Now, BH Petrol's Infinity Euro 5 Diesel is different from the rest because it features German Diesel Performance Package additives. Now, these additives go into your engine, clean out all the deposits that have formed from years before, giving you maximum performance and maximum fuel efficiency. In fact, power loss is rated at less than 2%. That is an amazing feature, guys. That is an amazing figure as well. Now, BH Petrol's Infinity Euro 5 Diesel is available in two variants, B7 and B10 as well. So the next time you pour at BH Petrol using Infinity Euro 5 Diesel, know that you're making the right choice. are always subjective but there's no denying the fact that the new Ranger Wildtrak is a very good looking car. I really like that full almost vertical like front end. It's all very truckish in nature and then you have this C-clamp daytime running lights over here, the Matrix performance LED lights which are only available in the Wildtrak as well as the Raptor if I'm not mistaken. And then you get the fog light over here. So there's no doubt that it is actually a very good looking truck. But one of the key differences between the old and the new besides the new front end is actually this line over here. Something that we call the shoulder line. And if you notice, the previous generation model does not have a very pronounced shoulder line. It does, however, have this line over here which even the new model has. Besides the overall design, which is obviously very much different from the model that it actually came from, it's actually more hardcore, looks more hardcore than the previous generation model, which has curves and it looks a bit more softer. This looks a little bit more rugged, but it is also a functional design. The wheels, for example, have been pushed forwards by 50 millimeters so the front overhang is actually shorter. So this gives you a much shorter angle of approach in case you know you have to go uphill and such. But besides that, even the overall width of the car is now actually 50 millimeters wider. Besides that as well, continuing on that 50 millimeter note, even the bit of the new Ranger Wildtrak is 50 millimeters wider than before. Ford says that is to accommodate European pallets which supposedly never fit in the previous gener generation Ranger Wildtrak. The suspension too has, has actually been reworked and repositioned. This Ford says is to give the new Wildtrak a more car-like nature and that simple repositioning has resulted in a more comfortable passenger cell. The suspension actually does a better job at 
absorbing bumps and ruts and everything that the road throws at it in fact so much so that it's actually a much comfortable car than the previous generation model other than that though even though it feels a little bit wallowish when especially on the uneven roads as compared to, to the previous model which felt a little bit tighter it is actually generally a much comfortable car from the back one of the most obvious and i think perhaps the most handy additions is this side step over here which perhaps which means that you no longer have to step on the tire to get into the uh, into the back of the truck and now you get leds at the back here and then this 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 rare lights they actually seem quite expensive because they have a built-in radar for a blind spot radar over here I, i'm suspecting this is for the rare cross traffic alert uh, it does however say blind spot radar so perhaps it actually works in conjunction with the blind, sp blind spot monitoring system and since we are back here the back door is actually quite light so it, it has one of those easy lift systems and one of the key additions to to the bed liner i think <clears throat> something that you should know about is this a 12 watt socket 180 <coughs> 12 watt 180 watt maximum socket and a 230 volt three pin plug which was not available before but there's one thing that ford does not mention in fact perhaps i think only a few uh, media has reported on this and the, that's the fact that there is now an additional mounting point over here in the previous generation model there's only two mounting points one here and one here now there's an additional mounting point over here which is very handy uh, i use my truck to carry motorcycles and such so um, mounting them down i always had only four points to mount them down but i reckon having and i always wish for another one actually just to tie them down at the seat level so this i reckon will be very very handy so you can actually feel that it's a much wider truck than before just a quick demonstration guys since we have the previous generation model with us here anyway notice that even though it comes with an easy lift system which is extremely handy um, you'll notice that there's no side step so the only way to actually climb this is through here um, and you look goofy while you're doing it and then you'll notice that there's only one socket over here a 12 volt socket here which i've never used throughout my ownership experience um, and this is what i mean there's no mounting point over here the, the newer model has actually three mounting points at each side so that is actually quite good now let's talk a little bit about the engine but before we go further let me just demonstrate something the previous generation model actually came with gas struts so this is actually quite handy because this thing is quite heavy now let me show you what the latest generation model has has the latest tech guys. It has no gas struts. Just the good old. I can't even remember what you call this. So, no gas struts. A bit of a bummer. Uh, of course, you can get this out in the, the after has an aftermarket accessory. But both trucks actually run on the same engine, a two-liter bi-turbo four-cylinder. Uh, diesel power plant of course producing the same amount of power 220 ps and 500 newton meters of torque but the key difference over here is actually a basically a reworked gearbox it's basically almost the same gearbox as before it's still a 10 speed gearbox but it has been reworked for it says it's actually lighter now than before it's more robust now than before it still uses a top converter but the ratios have actually been shortened so that power delivery is more instantaneous and there's no lag in delivery which the previous generation model had um, it had sort of a dead spot where power was neither here nor there in the latest model though power is more instantaneous and is there anytime that you need it however there's one thing that i really uh, i think could be better about the new wild track and that's the housing of this fog light at the bottom here it looks too cheap it's just it's unfinished and it's in pure plastic uh, and the plastic housing where else in the previous generation model 
forgive the battle scars over here but you'll notice that the housing of the fog lamp in the previous generation model is actually in the same color as the body to give it a more premium basically a nicer touch so that i think is lacking in the new model but having said that even the wheel arches over here basically at the back which basically goes all the way to the end here obviously in this cheapish plastic stuff which the previous model did not have that is finished in a body colored wheel arches but having said that even this vent over here which is actually functional let me demonstrate this you see it goes all the way in so this is actually not not a dead vent or something it's not just there for show it's basically to channel air out of the engine bay but even this is finished in this very not so nice plastic fitting over here which the previous model had in body color which i think is, looks more premium now let's get inside because the interior is actually quite nice um, the other thing that i need to point out is that maybe it's a new car but opening up the door the door feels heavier than before and it actually just sounds better that clunk makes it feel uh, more robust i would say but what i think may not be so robust is this door latch thing here so this is the door latch this is how you uh, open the door when you're on the inside um, some of my passengers were confused and could not actually open the door because they didn't see it over here but this does not seem like it will last very long or maybe bigger thicker hands you know some of uh, our lorry driving friends may actually accidentally break this but uh, time will tell besides that though the overall interior is quite nice one of the biggest departures from the previous generation model is the placement of the start stop button now it's on the right hand side whereas previously it was on the left and then around the doors well basically you get this double stitching over here which is great and then you get an additional set line or stitch line over here which the previous generation model does not have this gives it a elegant appearance and then you get basically this indian light that comes out of here at night when the lights are on um, the, the control buttons are completely all new i do i however would like to point out that as good as the seats are they're comfortable they're wide they're clad in leather and they're electronically adjustable no memory function so they're adjustable in six different ways front back up down front back and basically your lumbar support over here as well so eight different ways however in my car we get thigh support this you don't get thigh support let me prove it to you let's go there so there you go watch this thigh support so which i think is quite important for long distance journeys so this is you don't get lumbar support though the, the lumbar support is i'm not mistaken is manual but at least thigh support is there so the other thing that the previous model had is this a lighted vanity mirror for both the driver as well as the passenger unfortunately the new model does not even have a vanity mirror guys this is basic the passenger though has a vanity mirror but it's not lighted so the interior is undoubtedly a really nice place to be in this is one of the most premium interiors in the pickup truck world in malaysia at least there's nothing that looks and feels like this um, the hilux as nice as it, as it is does not feel as premium as this the navara is a long shot the triton is in a desperate need of an update i hear there's a newer one coming that is going to be based on the navara so i can't wait for that uh, other than that well even the peugeot land track it's nice there's no doubt it's a nice interior but not as premium as this truck you get a 8 inch color tft screen over here which is basically customizable you can customize 
customize it to show anything that you like. Um, so from here I can classic view, you can put your round gauge or digital speedometer only. So there are things that you can, basically you can change it according to your mood. Um, I'm not really a fan of uh, digital uh, meter panels, but I like the fact that this is quite simplistic in nature and doesn't try to overwhelm you with too much information. So this is good. This though, this 12 inch portrait screen, like wow, check out the, check out the details on this. It also has wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Let me just turn it on. So it has wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which it's trying to connect. Connected and then now let's see if I can get the full pocket. So my phone is So you do however get a key wireless charge pad over here and if you look further down there you get two USB, one type C and one type A USB port. You do get the slot over here to place your handphone. I have a, I think it's a 13 plus or something, if I remember. So it'll fit very nicely in here. If I remove the casing, it'll fit even better. So you get this twin uh, cup holders here. Uh, um, parking sensors are here, traction control, your drive modes. Basically, you press this, it shows me what's around me and if I press it again it goes back to everything um, and then this are basically your, this is basically your drive mode selector so it shows up here now it's in normal you get uh, normal mode you get uh, eco you get tow and haul you get slippery you get uh, mud and ruts you get sand and you get for high and for low it's basically a very um it's still very much a ranger especially but it's an obvious evolution of it i do however wish that there, there was a manual handbrake rather than this electronic one but i guess the overall placement of how the center console looks like well, it necessitates the use of an electronic handbrake. The, I think it's the XLT, the XLT Plus and such, you still get a manual handbrake. Now this, I really like, let me show you this. You get two glove compartments. So this is really cool. But before we go to the back, I would just like to point out that uh, even though it comes with an, the a very complete safety system. So it has, basically it has ADAS. You get rear cross traffic alert, which the previous model doesn't have. The hill descent control, which is quite uh, common actually. And then you also get stuff like uh, 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 rear cross traffic alert, as I mentioned already. Lane keep assist. Now lane keep assist was also available in the previous generation model. But on that topic, in the previous generation model, Turning on and off the lane keep assist was a simple button over here. Right now though, you have to delve deep into the settings to actually turn it on or off. But having said that, I think full credit to Ford for actually thinking about this. Now, your basic controls such as your air conditioning controls, your over here uh, uh, your on and off button for the air conditioning basically everything is basically is accessible through these buttons over here which i think is important because these are your controls that you will be using uh, quite frequently and you want to be able to access them uh, quickly so that i think is quite important now let's take a look at the back seats for um, now, the placement of the tools in the Ford Ranger Wildtrak as well as the other models is actually at the back here. 
this is where all your jacks and all your other tools are located and then besides that what I really like are these little cubby holes that are available now so this is great to keep your stuff um, you get a type C and a type A USB port which was not available previously and you get this 3 point 3 pin plug a 230 volt 3 pin plug the Ranger is still the only pickup truck that has a 3 pin plug guys you have no idea the amount of times this 3 pin plug has actually saved us uh, when our cameras have depleted we have charged it here uh, I've been on the road and did work and charged my laptop from this 3 pin plug it's, it just works wonders and then now you also get this air conditioning vent which just makes it all the better and as for space the front seat is adjusted for my 180 centimeter frame quite comfortable tie support can be better but I'm not lacking of space so quite a good place to be in but driving the, Ford, the new Ford Ranger Wild Track, well, that's an occasion by itself. Before we even get to that, I like the level of customization in terms of uh, my driving, uh, my preferred uh, driving position, simply because the new Ranger Wild Track has this a tilt, uh, basically a telescopic steering wheel adjustable for both reach, reach as well as tilt the previous gen generation model did not have this um, so this is something that i really appreciate because it gives it lets me become even more comfortable behind the wheel and as soon as you get going well there's no doubt that the interior is a nice comfortable quiet place to be in it's just not as comf not as quiet as the previous generation model as we have already uh, proven because we did a decibel test and the and we basically found that the latest generation ranger the interior of the current current generation ranger is actually noisier than the previous generation ranger simply because it doesn't come with active noise cancellation a feature that i think will be missed especially on malaysian roads when you get all these motorcycles just buzzing past you we know that the drone from those exhausts can be really annoying so yeah active noise cancellation will be sorely missed um, other than that though it is basically a much nicer truck to drive as well simply because of the suspension layout uh, the suspension is more or less the same it hasn't really been dramatically reworked but as I mentioned earlier it has been repositioned and because of this repositioning it has basically given the the wild track a more comfortable feel it absorbs bumps and such more uh, elegantly and this basically results in a more car like feel and power delivery too well look at this there's no sport mode in here uh, that you'll only get in the raptor but power delivery well one thing i like that is that there is no lag in power delivery uh, so power delivery is instantaneous even though it has the same amount of torque as before but because the gear ratios has been sort of reworked and, uh, and if I'm not mistaken, it, they have been shortened. So if I put my foot down, there's just a very small delay, very tiny delay as the ECU tells the gearbox which gear it should ideally be in to give me maximum power. So that I really like. Now at higher speeds, well, it doesn't take me very long to get there, but at higher speeds of, of about 110 kilometers per hour, wind noise is actually quite audible back in the cabin. You get a lot of wind noise coming from the edges of these pillars, from the windscreen, and let's take it up a little further. definitely a much more comfortable car as before I'm not being thrown around a lot more and even at high speed corners such as this it actually feels planted it's just a little hop and skip here and there but other than that it's actually quite decent but if you notice I actually have to increase my voice to actually speak to camera so this is something that 
I'm not going to say how fast I'm going. It's quite illegal. But uh, this is something that I didn't have to before in the previous wild track. So this is basically a byproduct of not having the active noise cancellation. But again, it's a nice, powerful car, comfortable, uh, and that basically is what matters. So if you've never driven the previous generation Ranger, the Wildtrak, you're not going to miss the active noise cancellation. In my opinion, yes, the interior is uh, more noisier than before, but it's also more comfortable than before as well. The new Ranger Wildtrak is undoubtedly a much, much better car. At 168,800 ringgit, it's also quite a bit more expensive than the previous generation model. I, if I remember correctly, I bought it for about 140 or 145,000 ringgit, and the newer model is basically 25,000 ringgit more expensive. Uh, you do get quite a lot more kit though, even though the power plant remains the same, the interior features, the safety features, and basically the car generally is a much nicer car than than the previous generation model. Is it worth it? Hell yeah! It's a very nice car to own and drive. I love my Ranger Wildtrak. The versatility that it provides me uh, for my work and even for my lifestyle needs. IKEA runs are super easy. You don't even have to worry about anything. You're buying a new couch, no problems. Your parents are moving house, no issues. You having a motorcycle shop, which you used to have, uh, no problems at all. So the amount of versatility that a pickup truck gives you is undoubtedly unparalleled. Well, perhaps if you need something bigger, then you have to go out and rent a one, uh, a three-ton truck or five-ton truck. But besides that though, I really like the Ranger Wildtrak. Perfect for uh, your urban needs as well. Of course, it's a really big car to park around places like Bangsa and such, but it has an insane number of sensors. Um, one, two, for about eight sensors front and back perhaps maybe ten uh, so that just gives it a uh, it's basically an easy car to drive and to live with and the new model has a, a high definition 360, 360 degree camera which just means that it's easier to maneuver to park and to live with is it worth it definitely should you buy it definitely should you buy it over the other model definitely thank you for watching and do consider subscribing.